yesterday's talks failed because, as you say, the Greek government didn't bring enough proposals and there is a gap of two billion on the table still. What are our chances and what's the prospect where, while we're heading for the Eurogroup on the 18th of the month, uh, first of all? And second, do you intend to do anything about all those leaks and official statements in Greece that refer specifically to some cuts in the pension system and some cuts uh, and some increase uh, in the uh, VAT and um, disregard all the, all the rest that's going on the, on the negotiation table? Thanks. Well, uh, as uh, you know, President Juncker made the last attempt this weekend to find uh, via personal representatives and in close liaison with the other institutions a solution with uh, Prime Minister Tsipras uh, that uh, would allow for a positive assessment in time for the Eurogroup scheduled on the 18th of June. Uh, while some progress was made, the talks did not succeed as there remains a significant gap between the Greek plans and the joint requirements of the institutions. Uh, let me make clear that the Commission is a mediator in these talks, is not a creditor. Uh, the creditors to the Hellenic Republic are the 18 other democracies of the Eurozone and the international community through the IMF. So our role yesterday during this weekend was to create the conditions for a unanimous agreement between Greece's creditors. Uh, President Juncker is disappointed that despite his consistent and uh, great efforts to uh, facilitate progress in these talks, uh, this progress was not so evident. But still, uh, as we said yesterday, we stand ready, if there is something new, to engage with the Commission. Our Commission building and the President's office are open 24-7. So if there is anything new, we would be very happy to contribute as mediators in taking these talks further. On the other question that you raised of a specific uh, number of issues that have been reported or misreported, I think this is a good opportunity to ask uh, Annika to come and give you on the record uh, the Commission position on the issues that are out there as a consequence of leaks or misreporting. I think it's an opportunity to set the record straight. Annika. Thanks. Um, as Margarita says, the package proposed by the institutions is substantial, it's balanced and it makes full economic sense. The proposals meet the needs of the Greek people, the Greek government, but also of the other 18 member states um, who also are democratically um, accountable. There are five main pillars to the proposals from, from the institution side. One, a sizable and credible fiscal adjustment. Greece would commit to achieve a primary surplus target of 2% of GDP in 2016 and to reach 3.5% of GDP by 2018. Secondly, important measures to improve the tax administration, for instance, through the um, establishment of an independent tax and customs administration and the fight against tax evasion. Thirdly, a concerted effort to strengthen the stability of the financial system, for instance, through a strategy to tackle um, non-performing loans. Fourth, Growth enhancing structural reforms, for instance, by preserving the progress in the labor market, moving ahead with lower prices through greater opening of product markets. And finally, the modernization of the public sector, including through the fight against corruption. Now, all these measures are very much in line with the 20th February um, Eurogroup statement and have been discussed at length within the, Euro the, within the Brussels group. Um, now, as I've said, these are concessions already made. Um, let's move to the individual um, topics. Fiscal targets. The fiscal targets for 2015 have already been substantially revised downwards to previous commitments. A primary fiscal target surplus of a primary fiscal surplus of 1% of GDP is now requested, which is substantially below the 3% of GDP program target. The reduction is actually bigger 
than what can be attributed to the effects of the economic cycle alone, which was what was agreed by the Eurogroup on 20th February. The medium-term fiscal target has also been revised downwards from 4.5% of GDP to 3.5% of GDP. This is a major concession. Also, the deadline for reaching this target has been pushed back by two years to 2018. The budget targets incorporate, on top of that, the humanitarian measures adopted in February 2015. They also strongly promote the rollout of a guaranteed minimum income scheme that would protect the most vulnerable, this scheme to be rolled out in 2016. By now, the Greek um, authorities agree to this target. The question is how credible the commitments are to achieve those targets. And there, let's talk about pension cuts, um, which is, you know, to prevent any misunderstanding. Um, it is a gross misrepresentation of facts to say that the institutions are calling or have called for cuts in individual pensions. Yes, the pension system is one of the most expensive parts of spending. It's also one of the most expensive pension systems in Europe, and therefore a reform of the pension system is part of the requirements. The institutions, again, are not and have not asked for cuts in individual pensions. The reform is about phasing out early retirement, about prolonging pension age, um, about removing incorrect incentives for early retirement. Um, it is also about making the Greek pension system financially sustainable in the long run and efficient, for instance, by merging the different schemes that are available. Um, the institutions, according to their joint assessment, had concluded that the pension reform should yield about 1% of GDP each year. The suggestion from the Greek authorities was for 71 million euros in 2016. That is less than 0.4% of GDP. Likewise on wage cuts. It is not true that the institutions are calling for new cuts in wages. They are calling for the modernization of the wage grid of the public sector in a fiscally neutral manner and for preservation of wage practices in the private sector in line with international best, best practices and also bearing in mind the very high level of unemployment in Greece. This does not necessarily imply wage cuts, but rather that, they should, that wages should grow in line with productivity and competitiveness needs of the economy. As President Juncker has already said on numerous occasions, the proposal also opens the way for a modernization of collect collective bargaining, provided this is done properly, involving independent bodies and international organizations such as the OECD and ILO. Let's move to VAT rates. Greece has a very fragmented VAT system and every everybody agrees it is both necessary and useful to improve VAT collection. The authorities have proposed to significantly broaden the tax base at a standard rate of 23%. Reflecting the need to protect the disposable income of low-income households, the authorities have also proposed a reduced rate to cover a limited rate, um, number of goods, plus a super-reduced rate of 6% on a very limited number of items. The institutions have made clear that there is scope to discuss the proposals of the authorities, provided the numbers add up. As part of the efforts to promote fairness, the reform should also streamline exemptions, serve to combat fraud and increase compliance. This is a fair and progressive package. I think that should be a basis to exclude some of the misunderstandings that may arise. And again, as Margaritas has also said, um, the institutions have made a number of concessions. We're always ready to discuss, but um, we need to take into account, and that's what the institutions have been doing, the needs of um, the Greek people, the Greek government, and the other 18 member states. I am. Um, are international organizations such as the OECD involved in any collective bargaining in any, any other uh, Eurozone country? We, 
Annika just said that as part of this comprehensive package that are now you have on the record, it was clearly made uh, uh, clear to the Brussels group discussions that the Commission would be willing and the other institutions to consider a collective bargaining scheme that would reflect the highest European standards. And as uh, guarantors of such a scheme, we uh, think that both the OECD and the ILO would be better placed to provide such a, such a blueprint. Peter. Um, <clears throat> late last night, Olivier Blanchard, the chief economist of the IMF, posted on the IMF website uh, a critique of both the European and Greek side of this uh, negotiation, uh, and I guess for the first time publicly calling for debt relief even under the plan you just described, uh, saying there would have to be at least be extensions of the maturities of the current bailout loans, and if there are any further relaxation of, of those uh, surplus targets you just articulated, there would have to be haircuts. Um, now, they haven't publicly said this before. It seems to be a pretty direct critique of the European position. I wonder if you have any uh, comments on, on that blog post. Thanks. Um, let me first of all use the opportunity to say that um, I stated the 71 million um, proposal on pension reforms represented 0.4% of GDP. Obviously, that is wrong. It is a 0.04% of GDP. Um, as for your question, Peter, the interview states the view of the IMF. The political reality is that there is a need for progress and renewed trust in the talks to conclude the current program, and this should be the basis for any discussion about post-June. Uh, Manoli? Well, if I've understood this correctly, Annika, you were saying the, you weren't suggesting pension cuts and extending the retirement age would be enough. But the Greek government is saying that an extended retirement age isn't enough. Other resources would have to be found as well. Um, but the Commission won't accept these other sources. So if no other sources are fine, found, would you have to accept re pension cuts? And also, I understood that you say there's a difference of about 2 billion euros between the two proposals, and the Commission says that they're trying to be flexible. But I'm a little bit surprised. If you can't sort out a problem of two billion, which is not a huge amount, where is the flexibility that you're wanting? The Greek government to propose the, way, the best way forward. All we want uh, is that the numbers add up. Um, so, you know, the proposals by the Greek government would have to um, obviously go substantially above 71 million euros. Um, on the second question, um, sorry, the second question was? Flexib Flexibility, yes, as I've said, the, um, the targets have already been significantly lowered. If you look at the medium term um, um, surplus targets, for instance, the 4.5% has been reduced um, and, and the to 3.5% and the deadline or the, the target time for reaching that has been um, extended by two years. Um, I, I believe the concessions overall that have been made and the flexibility that has been shown um, is, is quite substantial and um, it's not a one-way street. James. Thanks. Um, have you planned for the, what have you done to plan for the state of emergency that your Commissioner Ottinger has called for? He's basically said it's chaos in Greece after July 1, so what are you doing to plan for that as he has called for? Thanks. Pre you? We have been very busy negotiating an agreement. That's what I have to say. Yes, Jorge. If uh, an agreement is not reached uh, by Thursday, uh, will there be time to conclude the program by the end of June? And a second question, if I may, 
uh, over the last months, you've been very reluctant to make public all the details of the negotiations because you said that that will make the negotiations itself more complex. So I was wondering why today you announced and detail all the specific details, although we knew because of the media leaks. On your question, the only deadline we now have is the 30th of June, which is the time, the date where the Greek program expires. We have a Eurogroup uh, statement, uh, Eurogroup meeting on the 18th, which we would have pre preferred to be uh, held with something that would have emerged from this uh, weekend. This was not possible. So these are the, 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 the time limits in which we work. As for the details that uh, uh, Annika just gave you on the record, I think this was a moment to do it because as Athanasius and many others probably have seen, there has been uh, uh, a number of misreporting uh, out there, uh, a number of uh, alleged uh, uh, arguments, and I think that uh, Annika's comprehensive and on-the-record account allows for everybody to see where we are. Who else? Someone standing then. Do you have a mic? Yeah. Alex. Thank you. One question for you and one for Annika. Um, does President Juncker have any intention to stay involved in the coming days in the efforts not Withstanding anything that happens on the on the level of negotiations, is he planning to speak to Mrs. Lagarde, to any of the national leaders in the eurozone? Could you give us an idea, or has he washed his hands of this after yesterday's failure? And Annika, one question on the details: collective bargaining is that really such a crucial part of this package, given that a right of center government that preceded Mr. Tsipras's couldn't move on this point, and now the creditors are asking a government that is not just left of center but left of left of center. Thank you. You missed uh, my statements earlier where I said exactly uh, what President Jung, uh, how he feels and how he thinks. I can give you the gist of it, that he remains convinced that if there is something new, that we will have stronger reform efforts on the Greek side and political will from all sides, a solution can still be found before the end of the month. As for the collective bargaining, I don't think that Annika profiled this as the issue, but it was one of the pieces of the puzzle as we presented it today in full transparency. Jean-Jacques. A follow-up question on what Mr. Oettinger said this morning about the possible need for an emergency situation in Greece as of the 1st of July. Sorry, but for me as a journalist, this uh, picks up on what was happened after the meeting of the Eurogroup uh, meeting in Bratislava. I don't know whether Mr. Ittinger has a spokesperson here who could explain what he meant, or if that's not the case, uh, does the Commission distance itself from the comments made by Commissioner Ittinger? Jean-Jacques, it's for you uh, to assess what we say here on behalf of the College and President Juncker. I can repeat the response I gave to James. On this dossier, the President is personally involved and uh, Dostrovskis and Moscovici are the two vice presidents uh, who are involved. I have nothing further to add. Christian. Yes. Just to come back, what Annika was saying about the possibility of finding other forms of financing than cost. Has defence been put on the table? If so, who, who has put them on the table and why have they been refused? Also, I heard this morning that an agreement could be found in a night provided Mrs. Merkel uh, participates in the negotiations. Is that feasible? Can we ex wait for the European summit of the 25th and 6th before trying to sort things out? Well, I think it's no secret that the defence budget, uh, the, uh, the uh, second largest uh, as a percentage of GDP after the UK. So when we talk ab about 
the financial situation of the country obviously would have to be taken there but also as Annika has said it's not really up to the commission for this decision to be taken it's a decision as indeed any decision that has been talked about here which would have to be taken into consideration by the Greek government they are the sole authority responsible for deciding what their financial priorities should be on your second question on what Mr. Valoufakis said, uh, his appeal to the Chancellor. Well, I think that is a question that you should uh, put in the uh, press room of the German federal government, not here. I don't know if uh, today or tomorrow Mr. Draghi and Mr. Juncker will have a meeting, a special meeting on Greece. I announced in my opening statement that Mr. Juncker invites Mr. Draghi for lunch, uh, working lunch today, ahead of uh, Mr. Draghi's speech to the Econ Committee of the European Parliament later this afternoon. And this meeting is also in liaison with the, four, uh, the five presidents report lunch that is happening today in this building. Anything else on any other subject, probably, that we can still tempt you with today? Yes, please, go ahead. Thank you, Annika. Unless it's for Annika. Is on FC? Yes, go ahead. Jarno Hartigan, the Finnish Business Daily, Kauppalehti, on the four presidents or five presidents, which is it? Um, 